Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. Most uh, global equity markets had a little bit of a down day yesterday following on from the Fed with the US 30 actually just trading above potential um, support around about 18,000. So it's still just kicking around that 21 period SMA. We've almost got a bullish cross in the MACD, whereas the other technicals are relatively uh, neutral just now. So we've pretty much seen the dollar retrace all the losses that it had made following the Fed statement um, with cable and euro dollar and dollar yen and euro yen in fact pretty much bang on exactly the same level uh, as they were on uh, on Thursday night so uh, quite an interesting turn of events right there I've seen the front page of the Financial Times just now um, that uh, a large number there's a the big gulf between what the markets believe the Fed is doing and what the Fed ends up actually doing so there's um, obviously a little bit of miscommunication going on there but nonetheless most global equity markets are drifting a little bit this morning um, the UK 100 is very close to breaking at an all-time high again but we'll come back to that in a second so not really much to kind of do on the US there I think the UK 100 is probably for more of the action is going to be so looking at this uh, rally that has had comfortably we are in uh, broken above uh, 69.64 we are a stone's throw away from breaking 7,000 and normally when you see a, a big technical break up a, a psychological number like 7,000 that is a, a quite a big psychological level to uh, to be breached and um, a lot of clients now will immediately start short the US th the UK 100 because it's at an all-time ever high but there's obviously a lot of reasons why it's at an all-time high so just do consider that uh, before deciding what you're doing so 7,000 probably going to be broken at some point today so looking at Japan 225, it continues to go from strength to strength. It's not quite halfway, but almost halfway. We've always talked about this a lot before. If there is any small sell-off in this market, and bear in mind that dollar yen is already beginning to move back up towards 120, it's almost 121 again. Um, if there is any sort of retracement, around about 19,098 would be the potential support level. That would broken resistance now, expect to act, to act as support. The technicals are massively all overbought, um, but this has been driven by um, the yen movements that we've seen and the pension fund buying that the Japanese government are doing over there. So Japan 25 looking to be very interesting, especially if you spread betting rather than using CFDs because it's all in pounds per point. You don't have to worry about that yen exposure that you would do with CFDs. So moving on to um, dollar yen. Uh, dollar yen obviously very, very volatile, not quite reached 121.87. Um, well, when we look at uh, cable and your dollar, you'll get a chance to see that in a bit, a bit more a clearer detail. But nonetheless, decent day yesterday, not absolutely stellar, but still reversed its losses. Um, it's in positive territory only just today. Uh, 121.87, still longer term potential resistance. It's not managed to break that properly for quite some time. So crude oil uh, still bouncing around about potential support, 43.29. Um, you know, a big, big glut of uh, of crude from the last oil inventories. News out of uh, Saudi Arabia is production is still going to continue unabated. Uh, dollar rising again, um, but we are now at six-year lows on crude oil. So. Um, it's going to be quite tough, I think, to break through 43.29. Long-term potential support at 35.30 is very, very low for, for West Texas. Uh, I think um, people are, are really trying to defend that $43 um, support level, uh, and we'll soon see if it manages to hold. But the stronger the US dollar gets, the harder crude oil will uh, will have to, uh, to to hold on. And obviously, if people are begin to talk about resurgent interest rates again, and it probably will never happen at this rate. They'll always keep talking about it and it'll never end up happening. Um, people will be worried about global demand aspects and that will also add pressure onto crude. So looking at gold, gold obviously had a great day there on Thursday, decent, uh, on Wednesday, sorry. Decent day on Thursday, very volatile session. Again, looking at this uh, candle formation, spinning top, um, showing uh, you know, diverging opinions right there. And uh, today's candle, we're, we're pretty much flat for the day. Looking at it on the intraday charts, uh, is doing very, very little. Um, we are accelerating close to 21 period SMA. Slow stochastic and the RSI and the MACD are all posting uh, bullish signals. Um, so if we do get a real mixed bag of economic data from the US still, uh, that's just going to delay uh, interest rate hikes in the US even further. 1186 is a potential resistance to keep your eye on in that regard. So finishing up with Euro dollar and GBP USD, um, Euro dollar is almost back to where it started. We're looking at close to 105. We're currently at 106 and change. Um, so we've still got a little bit further to go. Obviously quite a negative day yesterday. Um, 
is not doing a huge amount today, but one spot 0786 is the potential resistance to be aware of there. That could be the potential pivot level for rechallenge of 102, depending if you think that um, the dollar still got steam left in it. Uh, as I think commentators are slowly coming around to the idea that uh, these uh, interest rates uh, are probably not even going to rise this, this year. Even though the market will think it will happen in September, it will probably be after that, depending who you speak to, of course. Now, finishing up with GBPUSD, you can see that this has pretty much uh, retraced all its way back, shooting straight up, shooting straight back down, as uh, we had some Bank of England members talking about there could be just as much chance of an interest rate cut as it would be of an interest rate rise in the UK, dependent on the macroeconomic data. And that's really just put um, Sterling on a very shaky footing. So we're below one spot 4813, which is potential resistance, and uh, that could be an interesting pivot point as well. So looking at economic data, we've got UK public finances today. If I remember correctly, not a lot happening on Tuesday. New home sales and CPI inflation data from the Eurozone. Tuesday brings um, PMI from China, Eurozone, Germany, UK, you've got CPI and PPI. Uh, RPI, all the inflation data you could possibly ask for, very interest rate sensitive, should be big for your dollar and cable. Uh, and, and you've also even got CPI data as well uh, due in the US. So actually Tuesday is a mammoth day for FX traders because uh, it's all about inflationary data. And uh, that is obviously the thing that's going to impact uh, future rate hikes in the US as well. So as ever, keep your eye on the chart forum, make insights part of your going forward and join me again on Monday to find out what happened next.